Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, students. It is our privilege this evening to introduce the Drama Club's production of Some Problems at the Moose Lodge by Tennessee Williams. Picture the scene. Memphis, Tennessee, early 1960s. Anna, please, tell us about the production. At the beginning of the semester, David and I cooperated closely with our wonderful stage manager, Corinne, and also the talented setting club. With all the members of the drama club and all the dedicated volunteers who were willing to sacrifice their free time to participate in the production of our wonderful drama show. So we hope tonight each and every one of you can enjoy the night and enjoy the show. Absolutely. Uh, and in order to help us enjoy the production without any disturbances, I wonder if you could all, including the students amongst us, take out your mobile phones that do not exist in your pockets. And if you could please turn them off or mute them so that they will not disturb our actors. And without any further ado, if I could introduce Chris Wang who is going to play the opening music for our production, The Bohemian Rhapsody. Come on, Bella, before it starts raining again. Hello, sweet boy. You're not the yard. Here I stay outside the yard. I've been telling you for years the darkest yard, though, Bella, is full of ticks and bliss. He fucks the village with them. Sweet boy has been with us for years. He's family to me. All right, if you want to claim relations with a flea beaten old mongrel, you do that. But I'll be damned if not, you as in law. <laughs> that is no kind of conversation to have when we just got back home from Memphis, where we buried our firstborn child. Bella, the dog is at the door to go out, like you said, please adjust it. Why do you let him go do it? Now it's out of door. The sharp wind is blowing. Not good with arthritis. What's the difference between osteoarthritis, as many specialists are called it, and the regular arthritis? I ask him to explain. Maybe age was the only explanation. It started raining again. He'll want back in as soon as he's done his business in the yard. Smells to me like he's made some business transactions in the house. On the papers I spread around his feet bones in the kitchen. Oh, this thing so it makes me sick. Ugh. Cornelius! Yeah. Now what? Look how it's behind a fireplace! Charlie's boots! He's back! Be fired again, I guess. This lady must have been asleep. 
I'll call him, but not loud. Bella, you've been more Charlie! Well. No, roll up stairs and come out of good. Charlie! Oh, uh, yeah, Mom? Are you hmm. back? Here's a call in and ask us if I'm back. Sweetheart, come down here, baby. What, 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 what's going on here? It's got you up out there. <laughs> What's a hawk up here with you? Cornelius, be nice. He didn't expect us this early. This early is late. Twelve twenty-five. Stacy, my steady from Yuzu City. Come down and meet my folks. Just a minute, Han. <laughs> Get into my clothes. Both of us so tired, so we went straight to bed. I bet. How's the funeral, Mom? Did it go all right? Yeah, perfect. Grave dog, bad intern. <sighs> we'll talk about this tomorrow. I can't discuss it tonight. Still cost the fridge, nice box. That would be wonderful, Mom. Where's cheese and tomato and bacon? So, you lost another job, huh? That job was misrepresented to me completely. You mean you found out your mobs some work? I don't want that to work. As long as I don't have to do it. Uh, a little tired, Mom. And I feel alright. Tired? You all had a long trip? Seemed to be sort of done in. Wouldn't think it possible, I spent six hours getting from here after I went to Memphis. I like to fly in town about two hours, one and a half, and the rest of sitting on sets from the audience airport. <laughs> there are now three delays. Each time I was announced, my mother says, Oh, I reckon I'll have some more coffee. That's a good deal of coffee with our heart to get and pressure. <laughs> it was less coffee than food. I looked through the window at her, and the first time she had her, a double deck sandwich. And next time, uh, chocolate covered cupcakes. So when I announced the third delay, I went to the lunch counter with her, and she ordered a coffee and a tomato. So I said to the waitress, forget about the tomato. The waitress ignored me, said that tomato before her. So I said to the bitch, can you look at the sight of this woman, the fastest girl on her, and sat on the up before her? The bitch glared at me, saying, I can't, since that's what she ordered. So I grabbed the speedo out of the southern and threw it back to the counter. That's when your mouth started crying loud. Up to then, just sniffing. But then it turned to be body, public body. It embarrassed me so I wouldn't sit next to her. <laughs> Blowing her nose sounded like loose hockey. Cornelius, I run off Kleenex, going back and give me some paper napkins. <laughs> Pretending not to get her, but follow her back to the lunch counter, and sure enough, I was right. She had uh, another three of coffee. <laughs> not a three of coffee, impossible to believe, but she did. I've seen it. There are seven eggs left. Cornelius, you want? Nothing. And I was in Memphis, during a brother, I went to a clinic about this chronic digestive tough of mine. Yes, I got a genuine diagnosis. It's something called pancreatitis. They give anything for it? A bottle of big green pills called... Never heard that. Three before each meal. Offer me some relief and the expense is off. Well, a man's got to live up pills in quantity and prices. Extortionary. With only time for relief at best. I say, it's time to quit hanging on. It's time for a man to let go. If you feel that way about it, so why that's your decision, huh? huh? Damn right it is. And no concern of nobody but mine. 
Under these circumstances, Bob, I hope it ain't true that you allowed your insurance to run out. With the inflation completely out of control, I refuse to pay the new rates. People in this country have got to learn to refuse to pay more and more for every commodity and service they purchase, including insurance rate. You've got more to think of. You think a woman that pants loud in an old yard dog is going to outlive me? <laughs> that I told me privately. If she just quit stuffing and bring down her weight, she could go on a year longer. But she won't. No way. No way. You've got no concern for that? There is cases in which continued existence is not desirable, Charlie. I mean, when the mind is gone, I don't think the true of mom. Lord? You have an observer, lady. A woman in her condition is not responsible for peculiar behaviors, so you can't blame her for it. I don't really do. No matter how peculiar it gets, it can get many peculiar. Don't listen to her, but stay to her anymore, and imagine things not said. No, Charlie, excuse me for discussing your manners, folks, which is uh, half yours too. But good deal, this is a hereditary fellow. I mean, you know about dances? Everyone can't pass us about dances. <laughs> Lunacy runs rapidly to mind, son. Was you old enough to remember the time you Mother and sister walk to the of a house at high noon with just a hair on and hair on a mask. <laughs> Sex confusion exists, man and son. Never mind my calls. You're just a very brother. Do not take time to me. Pathetic creature. Typical for stances. Not so loud, Pop. Mom is in the dining room listening. Listening to her heart pressure. She complains and blows in her ears like a storm sometimes. She's leaning against the table in the dining room. Never mind, she got nothing. Speak to her, you'll see. Mom? Are you alright there, Mom? I got to some onions for the omelette. I'll bring it out as soon as. Oh, omelette's gonna be washed. Excuse me, won't you take long? Help us, it's to be. Oh! Are you alright, Mom? Chips? No, Mom, sure. So just go make yourself comfortable on the sofa and um, think besides what's going about. He's got new medical problems. Can you make it? Bella! Bella! You hear me, Bella? Good health, lady. Both has medical problems. But pray attention to her. You hear me, Bella? Chips always existed. I let him prepare the omelette. Chips existed. You hear that? Always such a sweet boy. Remember how he was voted the handsomest boy in Pascagoula High. I remember how he was voted British girl as Pascagoula High. Then I remember clearly. Pop! You know the, the editor of the class annual just, he got a mix up, an accidental mix up. A very peculiar impressive mix up. I spoke to the editor of that 15 years ago class annual and he assured me that it was a terrible mix up, completely accidental. And he apologized for me for it. Oh, I was pretty pissed off. Kicked asses, black bow's eyes, and he uh, and he apologized me for that. Swore it would just a mix up. What was that, Chips? I didn't understand that. Bella. 
Do you realize you're talking to Charlie? No, Chips, whose funeral was attended day ago in Memphis. Charlie? No, Chips. Tragedy. Mantra. Confusing the mood of mom? I only know I've got two wonderful sons to thank God for. Oh, your lips gonna scare Let me take care of it, Mama. Not sure if I put all the ingredients in there. Onions, yes, but not the bacon and cheese. It should have some ketchup on it. Oh, this gonna be much. The scotch quick. Not sure if. Tony, you reckon you could guarantee that you can see where she seems to be headed? Somebody to help her out, an able bodied young woman to. More people need and more people can afford are two different things. Well, if I got married, for instance. Are you pulling? First, get your job at home and then think about what you. Retirement pay was adequate when we received it, but hasn't kept pace with the runaway inflation. Shit! What could keep pay with it except that horse that one can talk to W. Tenant? Some people think we are headed into depression. Is that an opinion? Opinion? No! Conviction? Yes! It's not the president's fault, the fault of the system. It's still just population increase. Here and world over, too many stomachs to feed. Why? I read somewhere by the year 2030. The two might have fun to enjoy, the more population will have double. Starvation, pestilence, war after war after war, that will start to enjoy. <laughs> I'm glad I'll be departed. Oh, they told me when I ran for mayor of Pascagoula and independent ticket, I had a chance of a fight in the wind with their radical opinions such as that. And I don't compromise the principles and convictions. It's only got 10 votes of 200. Why? Even your mom said she couldn't get the post through after transportation are still in reasonable health. <laughs> 10 votes only for the mayor, Cascagoula. Sorry, Bob. Sorry about that, Bob. I don't regret it. Who needs a political face in times like this? Only crooks will line their pocket with pride. Might have been comfortable for you. However, this house is a piece of golf property. This house is held up! Well, it is literally supported by two months. House maybe, but not the grounds. What would it be worse if we were obliged to sell it? When you, if you ever after you... Departed? Why else interest in my value as a cadaver? You misunderstand me completely, it just seems to be... Why price for employment? Why? Anything good that comes. Oh, that don't require any effort. M sucks. Admiral's rot. Being my closest friend of mine is branching out. In which way? Told me last week is opening a no motel in the golf court. You reckon you could pass our broom keys in motel and put money in cash box when the check out? Will that be too complicated and require too much effort for you? Huh? How definite is it? It's offer. No, you're being offered. I could get you a job. I'm Sykes, being my closest friend of mine. How could you keep it, Charlie? Huh? Go answer the door. I remove a matrix. Well, you pay, eh? Yeah, Corny, it's me. I just met your name. Uh, be hungry, this matter. 
No, no, no. Use this as a pretext to, you know, stack movies at the lodge. <laughs> so, I've just got back and I noticed the lights over here and figured you must be home. Jessie's taking a seat bath or she'd come over too. Uh, taking what kind of bath? Uh, a seat bath is a hot bath that relieves her hemorrhoids. Since the hemorrhoid is just a local sign of a more serious condition in her intestine. Ah, uh, I know, eh? Tell me. She hollered out to the bathroom door to be sure and express the sympathies of us both. Uh, could you share me some of that fear? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. First, why do you move the wire boots? Oh, sorry, yeah. Terry, go count and get, give me a hand with boots. Have you heard me, Terry? For pressing, yeah, I'm right there in the dining room, man. I... Well, in that case, take your tail to it and help me pull his boots off. No, that old stuff, Terry. I like that, you chair. Let me take it, boy. It must have been a terrible shock for you folks. No, no, no. It was expected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On destruction, no need to request making it, eh? Oh, that shit flying your ass. Now that he's that, huh? Uh, this is the younger one, Charlie. Oh, sure, sure. I recognize the Charlie. I mean, that long a time. Just time enough for him to make up with some female scarlet upstairs. Oh, that's right. Understandable. Boys will be boys, huh? Cool. Except when they'll be girls. Hop, I said to let shit flying rest. God damn it, can't you even wave his memory now that he's dead? And Sykes knows all about it. We've discussed your brother's conducts when I was by my wits and how to deal with it. And it was aimed at said, keen somewhere out of New Orleans influence. However, it has good advice missed it. Now apparently, there are other advice, our influence, as to extend it up the river, at least far as Memphis. No. I'm lucky I discovered some more eggs since I punched the first badge. Is that Mrs. Sykes in there? Bella, just need to come over, but Excuse ask me to me, express... Excuse me, next Friday. I'll call her later. The sympathies of us both. <laughs> Probably the mother first omelette herself. <laughs> you hungry, eh? Oh, no, no. I had a big barbecue supper. I could use a beer, though. Charlie, go get a cup of cold beers from the fridge. You hear me, Charlie? <sighs> Say hello, eh? My clothes are damp. Never mind. Let's see if you're good. Oh, I'll get to the yes. Trench coat of tights. <coughs> well, imagine. She's frying out more food. I tell you, Bella thinks eating rules off every promise. You know, got to drive her to the quick check and fall behind her and the food cart. Had to propag herself half what she takes off. Hey? Hmm, yes? You know, we've got to ignore this sort of irritations in life. Got to live with them, Corey. I honestly think that one was gone in her head. Before I married her, 35 years ago, I was warned of the mental and emotional problems. Her family was shot through with another kind of problems. Why did I know this warning? I don't know now. Then she appeared to be normal. Nothing more deceptive than Paris, you know, huh? Yes, it's a problem, I know. But you've got to live with it, though. Now, for example, I've never seen such a spectacle in my life as was in the airplane to the barrier of chips. I thought the fun of herself. It's everything her plate, most of mine. No shit. And for desert, a huge spoon of ice with two sauces on it. Two sauces? I swear she had no sauces. Her uh, butterscotch and half fat, topped up with whipped cream, nuts and cherry. When she was served that, I got out and puked in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what Doc Crane said about mom's overeating? So let's quit and accept the consequences, such as looking like a sexual exhibition. He wants to open first, Charlie. 
Open it in the kitchen. Okay, Daddy. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mom? Got a bottle opener there? Bottle opener? Yeah, yeah. Watch out, Mom. Think you hurt yourself? Bottle opener. It's alright, Mom. I get it. Charlie, don't you eat both bottles? Different Mr. Sykes, Mom. Good, good. Glad to hear that. Eat bottles. <laughs> Jesus. Dog brings that mom eats because anxiety feelings. Oh, anxiety over what he has to eat next. Mom will think I'm beautiful in her wedding picture. And I bet that she ain't light. Till she discovers your savior attitude towards us. All is totally different. I think I'm better. Disappointment, anxiety, feel, and depression is what makes you stop. Leave you all till this family dispute is. Charlie! Come on down here, Stacy. My clothes are still drenched. We walked here from the bus station in the rain. Well, then take cab at the depot, lend my raincoat to a friend who left town with it. I'll let the gas log in the fireplace. Good, good. I'd appreciate that. Tell her not to come on until she's completely dressing. My pantyhose just don't fit right. Jesus. I never did like these things. Prefer to wear regular garters, but they're hard to get now since you've gone out of style. What's he talking about? All right, got it fixed now. Pop, this is Stacy. Hi, Pop. Hey, excuse me, we're not getting up. Uh, Pop's got arthritis, Stacy. That's all right, my granddaddy's got that. I know all about that. Here's eggs. Mom, this is Stacy. Why, how do you do? How do you do? I thought you all might be hungry, so I... My wife thinks everyone's hungry. Well, I happen to be. Hello, Mom. Hello. What's your name, honey? Stacy. It's a family name. Take me as a first name. Why? That's a long, long story, Pop. You see, my Don't uncle... Don't tell right now, huh? Could I... Could we have something to drink, Mom? You know, we've been up in Memphis for several days. I was going to make you some... Coca or hot milk, but the milk's gone sour. No! A whiskey, son! Charlie's older brother just died of... Tell me no alcoholism! At 31! Those Charlie lights are the pop. You've upset me. Sit down, Mom. Let's talk about it tomorrow, not tonight. I'm a believer in talking all days out. I can be talked as quick as possible. Miss, uh... Stacy. Stacy what? Tomorrow, she's gonna be Stacy McCorkle. <laughs> you see? Right and early tomorrow, her last name will be mine. Oh. What's your make that, Bella? Something or nothing? Delighted about that. Yes. Yes. So happy I could die. Just die. I think you could use a little more light in here. What the? Oh, oh my! Did it hurt your mom? What? The water line hit your head. Did it? No. No. I'll tell you something. The big hot like we got up there in Memphis. It, it sort of numbs you to anything else for a while. I expect it sooner. Could our scars and famous of Birdman a day? Not satisfied with that. So he spent his night on my boss. <laughs> I know what kind of boss. I was in for one here in Pascagoula. That's when science Memphis. I must have done something wrong in his upbringing. To blame yourself all the time. When I had to pick him up and take him home from those bars, well, I didn't know that thing, but I sure did recognize it. So you can see and hear, enjoy the deductions, bro! Guys, you brought chips up from somehow! No, Mom. 
Chief has two parents. I mean, I can't remember. Me, remember? Nothing from you, but a dick and a beast. You mean old buster. Never feel nothing from no one on the district. And you know it. That's what it's we did. The hell will be able to buy that bloody price to me tonight? No, no, I... What happened to all this house? I can only stay the place where I ate well come. Lucky we didn't unpack. Because you could always get back in again. Call no, yes, please. Please what? You will see a sign of this pregnant chap here? I'm out of house. I say, out. Don't mind what he says. Cornelius is suffering more than he knows from our loss. No loss to me, a relief. Relief to King and to me. No. No. Don't say that. That's like him, Mom. No, your father cared about your brother. I know he cared for ships. For just come back. Very deeply, so deeply he couldn't touch food on the plane back home from Memphis. Is this? Yes. Chips. Chipton. Chipton McCorkle, the second, named after his granddad. Cornelius just didn't. You didn't what? Understand. I understood too much. Very good looking young man. No, good looking, but pretty like a girl. Don't. No, don't, Pop. Don't. I know boys like this. <laughs> Still look pretty as a girl laying on his caskets. So now you know, you know his kind, huh? Yes, I know boys like this. They used to flock to Goose and Gander, and after our place where I was employed, before my engagement to Charlie. Yes, boys like this come when the bar closed for our 59 cents breakfast of eggs, sausages, and grits and biscuits, horse biscuit with sawmill gravy, and with chicory coffee. Well, now she cooks. I made acquaintance with them, sympathized with their problems, and gave them advice. What advice? I always advise couple to stick together, not... Sincere, right? No, subtle. Make homes together. For miscuous reasons, that's what they live. Only some, not all. I know some had permanent arrangements, and I brought some to Jesus. I'm a born-again Christian. Yeah, what did you say? Stacy is a born again Christian. Let's pray. Together we are lost, her old and strive from the ways. Broken your holy commandments engage me for the occasion. Have mercy upon us, forgive us our carnal desires, and lead us back to the fold. Mercy, have mercy upon us, that yielded to the temptations of the flesh. Yes, Jesus, Jesus.
President of the Knight of Glory Motel chain on the coast. This is Cornelius McCorkle, once candidate for mayor. Yeah, yeah. Get to the station. station. Officer, Captain James would not want to make Sir McCorkle involved in the scandal. Be so goddamn you get the police got the Jesus freak of a horse! That's a too often! <laughs> Why'd you do that, boy? Drop my dad! Into the car! I said! No! Easy, Cody! Just go into the Moose Lodge! Keep praying, pray, Jesus! Storm is loud, come! 
Jesse Sykes, please. Jesse, Jesse Sykes, and Mrs. Sykes' wife. Jesse, is that you? Chief's got back from. A terrible storm blowing the door open and everybody's gone now. Why? Oh, God. God loves you, Jesse. Yes. Do. Come on. has persuaded the officer to dismiss all charges. Can you hear me? Bella? Storm! Awful! <sighs> they are going to talk everything over and get the string on the Moose Lodge! Moose? Lodge, yes! So just rest on the sofa. How are you feeling, Bella? What happened in Memphis must have been shocked to you. I nearly said it was suicide, Bella. Suicide's awful. It's worse than death. I do hope it wasn't that. But anyhow, whatever. What's that you got in your hand? Something was in the mailbox when we got back home from Memphis. Recognized Julie's handwriting. Hid it from Cornelius. Why did you hide it from? I would have torn it right up. You know our little Julie? Remember our little Julie? Oh yes, her. Who could forget her? Scared to open it. See here, in the corner of the envelope, Jesse. State Hospital number three. Stamped on the envelope, Jesse. Stay hospital number three. Oh no, take a stab. <gasps> Arcue was there 30 years. So I know. Would you read it first and prepare me a little? Bella, you know I can't see to read without my reading glasses. But sooner or later, you've got to read it. Of course, you can put it off until tomorrow when the other problems are hopefully straightened out at the Moon's Lodge. On sleep, so I know. Dear Mom, don't commit me. They can only hold me ten days without the consent of you or Pop. Pop would give it, but you wouldn't. All I had was a little nervous breakdown when that son of a bitch, <gasps> that black... <clears throat> that black mother I lived with in Jefferson Parish left me without a dime and went back to his wife. Hey, excuse me, Jessie, she's picked up some awful language. I'll try to skip the worst. Mom, she says, I swear I'm okay. Never felt better in my life. All I want is a chance to make a new start on my own without no Bella. Sorry. I can't go back to my old job at the pizza king on the highway. I know the manager can't wait to get me back there. So just sit tight. Don't mention nothing to Pop. And for Christ's sake, don't sign no papers. Love your little journey. <sighs> I feel better in my life. How sad. Now, Bella. You can, there's no way you can conceal this from Cornelius. So my advice is to let him handle it his way. Bella, don't interfere. Just resign yourself to it. That girl is better off right where she is than a notorious pizza king on the highway. Bottle of health discovered the whole kitchen was infested with vermin. Half the stuff was infected with VD. Can't wait to get her back. Bella, that girl is in a much better place. So don't be upset about it. Now, I'll try to get through to Amazon on the most large situation. Full soft hook. <clears throat> I 
Operator? But the Hessinger family is always upsetting. Well, operator, please connect me with the Moose Lodge. Ringing. Chips. God. Did you say anything, Bella? God, the first ball. Um, operator, who am I speaking to? Well, Mrs. Anderson Sykes would like a word with her husband if you'd be so kind as to call him to the phone. Now what happens on the streets, Jesse? Oh yes, Charlie attacked Cornelius and a hysterical woman was involved in the... And Jesse! What's a disturbance I hear? Find out. I'll hold on. Pretend to go possum hunting. Oh, the confusion in session. Yes, Bella. It's too spicy for me the way the period. Dr. Crane sent me to the proctologist in New Orleans who advised me to avoid all strong seed and things. Ah! My hemorrhoids have returned. I wonder if you could hand me a question of the sofa. Thank you. You know, at our time of life, so many afflictions come on us. Have you noticed? Did you ask me something? Have you ever had hemorrhoids? Well, I want to tell you that's an embarrassing affliction if there ever was one. I mean, when they're internal and severe, inclined to get worse but not better. At first, I got relief from the medication. What, Bella? So as I recover my strength, my own... So it's enough? Not necessary. I'll go find something to make a sun snack while the moose lodge. Oh, I'm sure the moose lodge was straightened things are so much better than the peace station. Can result in publicity of the wrong kind. Hand me a sofa pillow. Yes, my hemorrhoids have returned. Embarrassing thing to discuss. A woman of 60 obliged to expose such an intimate part of body. Oh, Doc Ring, but I don't mind old Doc Ring who delivered my children. But when I had to go at his insistence to New Orleans to that proctologist specialized in oh, such condition, was severe pain. Had sit on a robot on all the way, and the examination was too embarrassing to discuss. I had to strip myself naked and lies on the table that doubled me up. Oh my God! I'm telling you, Bella. He had an instrument with a light on one end of him. The end inserted and a magnifying lens on the other end, through which he looked. Up into the collar, all the way up the collar. Dee, <sighs> maybe you could go into the kitchen and look in the ice box for me. I just do 
don't have the strength to. Oh, I imagine some people are embarrassed about any kind of clinical procedure, but to me, it was the most mortifying experience of my life. It must be repeated. Oh, I don't know affliction like this come on you. It might be better to. I was about to say just go, but I'm scared to. Better. Are you? Me? What? See it coming. Another trip on the robot owner to the specialist and the instrument to my. No sludge. Don't listen until you get me exercise. Please, his wife speaking. Johnny, let's not revert to that subject. She never was brilliant at school. The <sighs> average plus little or minus. You know, passable. Never got flung out but once. Refused to go back. Her and charm. But Chips was born artistic. And Cornelius blames me for it. All three children, now reduced to just two. All run back home from school, racing the back door to the kitchen, the ice box, our head peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, always ready and waiting. Become such a habit, just like life. Still keeps Marge's peanut butter and my smiley's jellies in the ice box. Coming several flavors, each prefer different flavors. <sighs> Why? They hung up. <sighs> Operator, please get me the moose lodge. Moose lodge, please get me Anderson Sachs on the phone at once. His wife be here, please. Understood correctly. Charlie, youngest, fine boy, not artistic. His problem was employment. Oh, was that was unemployment. Charlie, hit Cornelius. Forget it, Bella. I'm sure tomorrow everything will be. Not by the trip, but 
I'll cut the crank. Please connect me with the cranks. Moose. Yes, he's a moose too. Tender. Harry, this is Jesse Sykes calling from Bella Marcos. You'd better hurry right over. He looks to me like Bella has had a collapse. Old bodies. Yeah. Old. Heavy. <sighs> She's morbidly unconscious. Possibly has a stroke. Bella! Can you help me, Bella? Yes, all right. The ambulance is called. Why? The ambulance must have removed her? Makes sense. How could it was on time? We're must 30 have... miles from Biloxi. Must have, must have, she's... Oh my god, Bella! What's that you got there? Uh, Smiley's jellies and Marge's peanut butter for sandwiches. May I expect the mini ice box? Run to it home after school. Are you alright? Not changed at all. Are you alright? Life. Habit. Uh, you know what I mean? Remove that stuff. Suit out. <laughs> I'm a pretend, a the toast woman. Either she just stick the tide, or just a question of time. The ambulance charge will still be paid whether she goes or not. Always oh, some bread, please. And in life, we just spread it always. Oh, Jesse, I forgot the glass paper to wrap the sandwiches separately in. Just a second. Glass paper? By the icebox in kitchen always. Cabinets? Yes, got it. What are you going to do with sandwiches, Bell? Thank you, Jesse. Chips, his favorite blackberry. One for Jovi, wild cherry. Charlie will have to be satisfied with the same. Cornelius is only interested in beer. I am sorry to be. Such a question of time. Well, maybe the moustache well straightened everything out.